Habitat loss in North America has forced monarch populations below the extinction threshold, which means we're in real danger of losing them completely. But these beauties are still fighting and they still have a chance if we add high quality monarch habitat to our gardens across North America. And now is a great time to plan. Firstly, we need to keep monarchs safe from disease. And a leading source of disease spread is actually this milkweed, Asclepius curasabica, also known as tropical milkweed. Unlike native milkweeds, tropical milkweed blooms over the winter, which actually discourages monarch migration and causes them to start winter breeding instead. Problem is, failure to migrate leads to a five to nine times increase in transmission of a deadly parasite called Afriocystis electroscira, or OE for those of us who have no idea how to say that. About 8% of Eastern monarchs have OE, but where tropical milkweed is present in Florida, Texas, Louisiana, and Georgia, this increases to 70, even up to 100% infection. If you're in the U.S. and have already planted this tropical milkweed in your garden, cut them back to six inches every fall to keep them from flowering over winter and get those monarchs back on the road. If you have the budget for it, consider replacing them with a species that is native to your area. And if you're watching from Mexico, the Caribbean, Central America, or South America, then tropical milkweed is native to your region and please ignore everything I've said. Lovely plant. And in our monarch habitats, it's so important that we avoid pesticides and herbicides. Caterpillars are squishy little sponges, and these chemicals harm caterpillars more than other insects. Studies have shown monarch caterpillars frequently consume a diversity of pesticides in their diet. Not the kind of diversity we want. We're using so many pesticides now, they're in the atmosphere, and have literally started to rain back down on us. Our gardens need to be chemical-free spaces for monarchs if we want them to have a fighting chance. Monarchs need milkweed to reproduce, but herbicides have taken out too much of our wild milkweed, so we need to replace those plants by growing milkweed in our gardens. And we only need to plant, let's see here, 1.8 billion of them. The right milkweed for you depends on your region. And here are some gems that cover North America. Asclepius incarnata, or rose milkweed, is native to Eastern Canada and most US states. It loves to sunbathe and prefers moist to wet soil and will be great near a pond or a rain garden. This one blooms from mid spring to early fall and is hardy in zones three through nine. Asclepius verticillata, or world milkweed, has a similar range but prefers well-drained soil with low to medium moisture content and this one can thrive in full sun or part shade. It's native to most of the eastern two-thirds of the U.S., as well as Canadian provinces of Manitoba, Ontario, and Saskatchewan. This one's hardy in zones four through nine and blooms from April through September. For those of you in the southwest and south-central U.S., check out Asclepius asperula, also known as antelope horns. This one's a full sun lover, and in the wild, it's actually found mostly in desert areas, so it's extremely drought tolerant. This one blooms from April to June and is hardy from zones seven to nine. Another drought tolerant species is Asclepius cordifolia, also known as heartleaf milkweed. This one loves a good rocky slope and is native to the west coast, including California, Nevada, and Oregon. It's hardy in zones seven to nine and blooms spring to summer. Asclepius purpurescens or purple milkweed is a real beauty, native to much of central and eastern North America, but becoming rare in some of its range. So this one could use some help. It's hardy in zones four through nine and blooms in June and July. It's drought tolerant and grows best in part shade, but can handle full sun with a little bit more moisture. Asclepius speciosa, showy milkweed, is a real fancy pants, and another widespread species that's native to Western and Central North America. This one's hardy in zones three through nine and has big showy blooms from June to August. It requires full sun and is very drought tolerant once established. There are so many more options, so this website, Grow Milkweed Plants, is your friend. You can get a list of species native to your region, and for selected species, it even shows you where to buy seeds. Fall and winter are great times to sow seeds, but if you prefer to buy live plants, you can check out this Monarch Watch milkweed market. They're closed for December, but they'll start taking pre-orders in January. I accidentally discovered butterfly puddling years ago when I took my dog outside to go potty. Moments after lifting his leg, a butterfly came and landed in the puddle for a drink. Butterflies love small puddles that have salt and minerals in them. A butterfly martini, if you will. Males especially like to collect the nutrients to offer as a nuptial gift during mating. Romantic devils. Here's a quick recipe to make your own puddling station. You can use a large, shallow dish, at least 12 inches wide or more, or you can just dig a shallow hole of similar size right into the ground. Add some sand or some coarse dirt, and you can also mix in some manure or compost with the sand. Top it up with some small stones for them to rest and land on, and then just keep your sand slightly moist, no open water. And then, cheers! And finally, we need to provide food, which we can also combine with shelter. Monarchs in migration travel up to 3,000 miles, one way. And you know how at the end of a marathon, there are always people with water bottles giving high fives? 
Well, that's what the monarchs need. The Xerxes Society has these awesome pamphlets that they made specifically to help us pick nectar-rich plants for monarchs in our regions. They explain monarch habitat needs specific for your region and then offer a really helpful plant list. Picking a diversity of bloom times is critical to help support monarchs over the whole year. They'll need nectar sources through summer and fall so they can store enough fat to get them through fall migration and winter and their return migration the next spring. And in the spring, we especially need to have nectar sources ready to greet them because they're gonna be pretty hungry and tired. And picking a diversity of plant structures like perennials, shrubs, and vines is a great way to offer shelter. We can use our gardens to reconnect habitat for monarchs throughout North America to give this amazing species a chance at recovery. And who knows, the perfect plants for monarch habitat might even show up right on your doorstep. Watch this video next to see what I mean. Oh dear, oh dear. Let me just cut your feet loose first, and then you can go.